I love the sound of the stove in the morning when I'm camping. I guess it's probably because I love coffee and food. So we got ourselves ready to go for another day of hiking by taking care of blisters, packing up camp, and walking up the wash. We were walking in the same direction that we had scouted the day before, but instead of turning up towards Burrow Spring, we continued heading out back towards the road. We were aiming for the Burrow Mesa pour off parking where we had a car. We actually had cars in four locations across the park. It was kind of a mess, but we'd still need those map and compass skills later, and we'd find out that our map is actually wrong. sun came out and we were reminded that we were in a desert. Just an example of how much conditions can change very quickly. Uh, we had rain, we had sun, we had clouds. Uh, and soon we arrived at our car, we dropped from our packs into a day hike up towards Burrow Mesa Pour Off. And this is actually the spot where, in the intro video, uh, some of our guys spot a rock slide caused by some mountain goats. Unfortunately, I had the camera and did not have an angle on the rock slide, but you can see how getting caught in a rock slide at a place like this would be a really bad day. And so we made it out to the pour off, which is a day hike I recommend. I'm not too much of a climber myself, so I'm not the one climbing here, um, but I was glad to be with other people who uh, shared, like me, an interest in doing more than just walking up and down a trail, uh, to checking out little side trails, to just to really exploring and enjoying uh, the area we were in uh, in a kind of a more hands-on way than just walking down a trail. Since we were close to our logistics car and not encumbered with packs, it was the perfect place to climb around, take a little more risk. Of course, each individual being responsible for the level of risk they took I can do about a house. I'll take another step. Down. I'll come down one more. Maybe. He's not really any other step down. Nice. Nice one. Watch out. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> Parkour. <laughs> Next, we hiked back through the spectacular countryside, back towards our logistics car and our packs. We had to set a logistics car because our trip was split into two. We had to cover some road miles in between, ferry everybody over. We also had to split our trip into two because we couldn't carry all of the water that we needed for the entire trip without relying on any local water sources. We could only really carry about a day and a half worth of water. So here we are unloading about 20 gallons of water we had cached in a car. This is now at the Mulier's Trailhead and we're planning to hike out on the Mulier's Trail and camp somewhere off trail once we got far enough in. Once everybody got ferried over and we distributed all the supplies, we started off on this next leg of our journey. You definitely feel it when you add 12 pounds of water back into your pack. But we were on a trail and the going was fairly easy to start with. We were enjoying the change in scenery. In the previous video about this trip, I mentioned how going out to the wilderness has to be ready for not everything to go according to plan. And we already made a few changes to our plans. The first half of the trip by Thule Mountain and Burrow Mesa was actually our plan B itinerary because we couldn't get permits for our plan A because we came in peak season and there were already too many people in that part of the trail. Here we found an excellent spot for our lunch break. 
So we just passed Mueller's Spring and headed into the part of the trail where there are a lot less people. For this second half of the trip, we also made a significant change of plans. Our original plan included a lot more miles with a different start and end point that would pre-position two different cars. But after our little trip to the Borough Mesa pour-off, we decided that we wanted to have less hiking miles and more time to explore around camp. This turned out to be a great decision because this part of the park is a lot more rugged and steep and we would end up finding enough challenges in addition to the more difficult terrain. And even though we were now on a trail and the navigating was a little easier, in the about 24 hours or so we spent past Mueller's Spring, we really only saw three or four other people. I mean, not counting our rather large group. After that challenging and spectacular descent, we made it into the Smoky Creek Valley here, and there's only one problem. Uh, we had never planned to go down into the Smoky Creek Valley. We were on Mueller's Trail, which we expected to come up here north and then turn back south a little bit and then intersect with Smoky Creek Trail. But in reality, the trail didn't quite do that. The trail actually comes down through here and intersects in the valley right around here. And we started to figure it out uh, when we started getting a funny angle on Mueller's and we were still kind of back up top. But then when we found that really steep descent, we knew that something uh, must be a little bit off. But we were on the trail and so we just continued following the trail. And how we knew that that was off is that um, we were looking along the map and said, where could there be a steep descent? Well, there could be something right around up here. Um, but the problem is that if we were there, we would have had to travel a much longer distance, and in between us and Mueller's, there would have been these mountains, which there weren't. So we knew something was off, um, and after we descended into the valley, we went ahead and took a bearing and located ourselves right around here. At first we thought we made a mistake, but then after exploring the area and continuing a little further, we actually found the sign for the intersection of Smoky Creek Trail and Mueller's Trail. And so confirmed that, in fact, our map was an error. And not long after that, we got our next surprise. The rain kind of pushed us to go ahead and set up camp. And we definitely didn't want to backtrack to the place we were originally planning to camp because it would have involved going back up that steep descent we just went down with our almost full packs. We preferred to put off that climb until the next day when we had a lot less food and water to carry. So here we are hanging and covering packs to be ready to get a little rain overnight since this was the night when we had the highest chance of rain and we were obviously already getting it. We were already within the zone where our permit allowed us to camp and we had an excellent view so we figured we'd go ahead and enjoy the rest of the evening which for those who were so inclined would include a little bouldering. turn to do the descent. Uh, chose the sliding in part for the fun of it and in part because it was really challenging to find 
a safer way to descend on the really loose slope. It was wonderful to be in the middle of nowhere again, again off the trail, although this time not so far off the trail, just enjoying exploring the wilderness with a group of friends. Occasionally really animated and loud friends. Like my hero! Right. I'm my favorite guy! I love this guy! Oh no! I don't want to give me that care! The scale of the visual is so far, it doesn't matter. Seth Rogen has been set, and it's cleared. It's cleared. Squishy. Those are nice. Like, I'll try one if you want. We resupplied in food and stove fuel from a cache as well as water, and so that kind of let us eat whatever we wanted in camp, kept our packs relatively light. Some of the crew went out exploring across the valley, as you can see here, and then some stuck around and did some more cooking and chatting in camp. It's a really nice, chill evening together. And relaxing that evening was a good reminder to me to worry a little less about leading the group and to really just enjoy being in the place, enjoy the reasons why we go out and hike to the middle of nowhere in the first place. I was really thankful to have a crew who could look out for themselves and help look out for each other. I just really enjoyed spending good time getting to know my friends a whole lot better. I can think of a few better ways to really get to know somebody than to spend some time with them in the wilderness. I mean, there's, there's always more dishes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a party. They never, they never go away. We weren't in a hurry to break camp the next morning because we just had a relatively short hike out. We'd also gotten some rain overnight, so we wanted to make sure everything was relatively dry when we packed it up. This right here is my shelter, which I shared with one other person. Technically, that's a one-man tarp, but you know, you just curl your feet up a little bit when it starts raining and uh, we did all right. But inevitably, we weren't quite happy with all of our gear choices. Inflated? I don't know if mine does too, it's definitely not as inflated. Let me hear it Usually halfway through the night, I feel pretty close. I punctured my half-length inflatable pad on the first night and uh, didn't have a good chance to fix the slow leak. So, it was that. But still, it was a beautiful place and most of the gear held out just fine. Well worth the visit, and even if you have to deal with a little bit of discomfort every now and then, well, it wouldn't be much of an adventure if we were completely comfortable the whole time. that steep section so we spread out a little bit and took some time to each spend a little time with God enjoying the serenity of the moment in his creation. That was a great moment in the midst of a really excellent trip. Photos and videos just don't do it justice, which of course is why you've got to get out there and do it for yourself.